Hi, this is Frank with Modern TV. We're here with Jerry Wilson. Wilson. Pretty good, huh? He's the president of the Oldsmobile Club of America. Yes, sir. We're at the Oldsmobile Nationals. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? Absolutely not. This is an oppor a great opportunity for people to come out. This is the largest collection of Oldsmobiles that you're going to find in this part of the country. Well, tell us a little bit about, you've got a 1929 Oldsmobile behind us. Yes, sir. I noticed in the other hall they had some 90s or 2000. I'm not sure yes, what it was. Yes, we actually go up to about 2004. Yes. Tell us about the cars that are here at the show. Uh, Anything that excites you. We've got more than 200 cars that are here, starting with this 1929. We've got an outstanding collection in the room in which we're standing are some outstanding examples of 1950s and, and early 1960s Oldsmobiles. Uh, going from a Fiesta, a 1953 Fiesta. Oh, beautiful car. Which is a beautiful car. It's a, and that car has driven many places, and I get to see it in multiple parts of the country. Yeah, I could take that, that one home. I've, I saw that in Lansing, <laughs> Michigan a couple of weeks right. ago. And I saw it in uh, Oldsmark, Florida. Wow. About um, so that's uh, well about traveled. a couple months ago. Absolutely. And uh, that car is, is out there for people to see. Uh, the owners like to have people sit in the car. Yeah. They like to have people see the car. Really? Uh, I've ridden in the back seat of that car in parades. Wow. So it's just it's an outstanding example of what General Motors built in the 1950s. I don't know why, but in 1953, yes, sir? they really hit it with cars. They did. There's a lot of cars that are very, very popular that were built in 1953. I don't need to mention any of them, but that Fiesta happens to be my favorite car. Oh, it does? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, it's one of the favorites around here. Yeah. Uh, it was really a, a new, uh, it was a step in a new direction for General Motors. You know, yeah. In the early 50s, they had some outstanding examples. Right. Uh, that, the 1953 was the first year for the Corvette. Yes. Okay, Oldsmobile had their own version of the Corvette. It's called an F88. Yeah. And there are a couple I of saw, examples I of I saw that car sell. It, for about two and a half million dollars. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. I understand that car is for sale again right now. Yeah. It's a part of a rather large block of things that mm -hmm. are in Colorado. So mm -hmm. if you're interested, ah, I'm maybe sure and, and have and, and can have, you loan me to? <laughs> well, I think if actually I think I could take care of about the last. You know, <laughs> there are a lot of zeros at the end. Yeah, of that, yeah, okay? yeah. And then there's some numbers in the front. I can yeah. afford the first two, okay. but I think the, the six zeros after that, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure I could handle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, we've got a number of, of uh, Starfires, which mm -hmm. was the car that actually succeeded it in right. 19, 1954. You know, it became a Starfire, mm -hmm. and the Starfire uh, then became, was a long line of mm -hmm. Starfires over the course of time. And they were really kind of the, uh, the really the ultimate in the Oldsmobile. They were the top of the line. Uh, the, the most luxurious and they and probably the most spectacular looking cars that they had at that time. Well, I the noticed time. there was a car over here in this hall that uh, had fuel injection and a four speed. And yes, sir. Absolutely. A it was called a Jet something? A Jet Star. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and, it, and if you look under the hood, you'll notice that there's a bottle of liquid. Yeah. And it's called liquid rocket fuel. <laughs> really? It's rocket fuel. Absolutely. Uh, but it, this was a car that was really ahead of its time. Yes. We we're talking about in the early 1960s, right. and they were building uh, turbocharged engines. Right. Uh, they, that was just before they came out with the uh, GTO. Right. And then Oldsmobile responded with their 442. Mm -hmm. And then following that, we saw other cars like the Mustang and other muscle cars that right. evolved over the course of right. time. I think that that uh, Jet Star or Jet, what did you call it? Jet Star. Jet Star was in 1962. It was 62. The 1963 version is, is the one that's over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, the owner of that car grew up in Puerto Rico. Yeah. His mother had a 1963 Jet Star. And so, what he did was he was replicating the car that his mother had. His mother was here a few days ago. Oh. And so, she was pretty excited about going out and driving it. Yeah. So, uh, he lives in Florida now. Yeah. And, uh, and and has been a very active uh, supporter of what we're doing. And yeah. I've had a chance to see him. and in Oldsmar, Florida, and in Lansing, Michigan, and here, and that's only been in the last three months. Excellent. So, what's up? What else do we have? Well, let's go on. Let's okay, well, in the next room, you're gonna find a long row of Hearst Olds. Mm -hmm. You know, Hearst Olds started in 1968 with a large block engine. Mm -hmm. It was the first large block in an intermediate series for General Motors. 
They did that for a couple of years before General Motors allowed them to put it in all of their cars in 1970. Right. We've got 1970 versions of those. We've got the, the uh, non-performance uh, cars that are over here, including two of the uh, their Cutlass Supreme SXs. Now, those, what does that mean? The SX in 1970 was a 455 cubic inch engine with a two-barrel carburetor and a 256 rear axles for those people. In 1970? In 1970. Oh. Absolutely. What now was the, that about? Well, the, actually, the, the SX, that SX was a, was a uh, part of the, a long legacy of Oldsmobiles that mm -hmm. were called turnpike cruisers. Okay. Turnpike cruisers had large displacement engines mm -hmm. with two barrel carburetors mm -hmm. and very tall rear ends so that they could go out, take them on the highway and drive them. This is a car that may not be the best for drag racing. Right. But when you're out on the highway and you're going 60 miles an hour behind a truck and you need to pass it, you just press on the accelerator, you just decide how fast you want to go and you think the speed and the car's there. Wow. Yeah, well, That's interesting. In, in these cars, actually, were high performance. Many of them, the gas mileage wasn't all that good. Yeah. But at the time, gasoline was 25 cents a gallon. Yes, I, I do and know that. So we, we did that. And actually, all of that, all of the racing and the performance cars was, a, was actually an evolution. And it was in response to the discontinuation of the automobile company support of NASCAR. Mm -hmm. They had been working with NASCAR and putting together automobiles. And, you know, Oldsmobile, if we go back to the first performance car, mm -hmm. if, if we want to talk about the first uh, muscle car, okay, is arguably a 1949 Oldsmobile 88. And why would that be? Well, what they had was Oldsmobile had two lines of automobiles. They had mm -hmm. one was the 98 series. That was a right. large, heavy right. car. Right. And it had an eight-cylinder engine in it. Mm -hmm. And they had the Model 76. And that was a smaller car with a six-cylinder engine. Mm -hmm. Oldsmobile made a decision that what we could do is why don't we take the engine out of that 98 and let's put it into that lighter 76. And we're going to call that an 88. And that was a straight... It a, was a V8. A V8. V8. Okay, so, gen so actually, Oldsmobile, if you go back and take a look at what was going on on the race car circuit, mm -hmm. out in NASCAR, there were two automobiles, there were two names that dominated all of that series in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. You had Oldsmobile, and the other was Hudson. Mm -hmm. Did you see the movie Cars? No, absolutely. Okay, and you remember Doc Hudson? Sure. That's part of the accuracy that's of, of that movie. Well. Yeah. I and, and I don't expect you to know it, but there's a gentleman that was actually from Wichita here that used to race NASCAR in a Hudson. Okay. His name? I don't remember right now. Okay. But I just remember having the story told right. to me, and he recently drove it back to, uh, I forget the track, Daytona or somewhere. Uh -huh. For uh, you know, a 50 or 60 or 70 year anniversary. Did, did you ever did you ever go to any dirt track racing oh, when yeah. you were young? Yeah. I remember growing up. We go today still. And, and I, Saturday night in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And you'd go out and watch those, and Hudson's dominated yeah. it. Yeah. But you take a look at that. Hudson was relatively low, mm -hmm. and they had high, those high power. They they had those Hornet V6 or the, yeah. the straight sixes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you had Oldsmobile that was running with them. Oldsmobile, until about 1958, dominated the series. Mm -hmm. And then Oldsmobile decided they'd put in a, 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 a three two-barrels, six-barrel carburetor, kind of displaced some things, but Oldsmobile was running ahead of everything. They ended up changing some of the NASCAR rules. Mm. Well, that gets us back to where we were before. What happened was, as the in the late 1950s, then we saw that the companies had to start pulling out of NASCAR. There were some accidents. There were some other things that happened companies pulled out. Well, what do you do with all the engineers who had all that go-fast engineering knowledge? They went to work for places like Pontiac and mm -hmm. Oldsmobile. Mm -hmm. Pontiac in 1964 introduced the GTO. Mm -hmm. Later that year, and it was again in the spring of 1964, Oldsmobile introduced the 442. Mm -hmm. The 442 was a direct response to the other muscle cars. It had a 442, it had a four-barrel carburetor, it had a four-speed transmission and a dual exhaust. And that, and, and that grew up. And if you go back and even in the 1964 Oldsmobiles with the 442s, there were about a, about a dozen of those that were four-door sedans. Hmm. <laughs> so 
That'd be a rare car to have today. Well, it would be a rare car to have today, but what did they do to build it? They took their highway patrol interceptor package, mm -hmm. put it into an F-85, mm -hmm. and then put the put the four-barrel carburetor on that engine, put a four-speed behind it, and, and dual exhaust, and that was how they responded to the threat that GTO presented. Yep. And then it continued to evolve, and, and through the 60s, became one of the, the you know star uh, brands of automobiles. Excellent. Huh. Well, I've learned okay. something today. It, that's a good thing. It is a good thing. Okay. Anytime I can learn, it's a real good thing. Well, if you want to keep going, <laughs> now, see, we're right now just only to the 60s. We well, can continue going on through the, to, through the area. If you you know, I probably got, no. That's great, <laughs> Jerry. I appreciate it. How far do you want to go? Yeah. Well, well the next we time. Can, we can talk about auroras if you'd like. No. You know, we next can, time. That, that gets at the other end. All right. I'm sorry. I'm no, <laughs> no. Okay. Hey, Jerry, appreciate that information. It's, it's great to be at the show here. It's great to have you here. I feel like we're really talking to somebody that is very, very knowledgeable. So. Well, I, I'm just learning. Well, I'm just there's as so long much as we're thing. learning. We're we've okay. got we've got a group of people around here. Who know so much, mm -hmm. and you know one of the key, one of the keys to all this. We need to capture this knowledge. Mm -hmm. We need to find a way to do it. Whether we capture it via this medium, or whether we capture it in writing, we've got to continue Absolutely. to expand that because there's a there's a heritage that's here that mm -hmm. we just really have to continue to push. Yeah, if right. you want to learn more about the Oldsmobile Club of America, you can reach us at our website at Oldsmobile Club. That's well, Oldsmobile Club .org. And uh, we've got a lot of information about the automobiles we have, about the club that we have, about events that we have going on. Uh, we host, actually our, our chapters host, more than 50 events every year across the country. So anytime you see something, if you want to learn something about the Oldsmobiles or mm -hmm. participate, mm -hmm. we'd love to have you. If you'd like to come and join our chapters, you don't have to own an Oldsmobile to be a part of this organization. Uh, we're really here to promote the, the brand Mm -hmm. and, and actually help people understand what we are and capture a lot of that excitement that every one of these people around here has. Well, you definitely car. got enthusiasm for the car. Well, I'll thank you that. very much. So, where do we go in 2020? 2020, we're going to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, we're going to be there. Uh, we're going to, this will be a rather large gathering. It's it, because it's back into a part of the country where every time we have a show, we have lots of people show up. But oh, it's uh, this in uh, suburban Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to have a number of activities that go on around there mm -hmm. while we're there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a chance to go see the Grand Ole Opry and uh, other, you know, there are all kinds of, uh, and actually some automobile plant tours. Okay. So how much else do you want to know? I, I told you I could talk for a long time. Do we mean to know anything? What else do you want to know? <laughs> what else do you want to know? I think we're good. Okay. Well, very good. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate Jerry. the opportunity. Hey, this is Frank with Motoring TV. Remember, subscribe, like, and we'll see you later. Thank you.